Hi, my name is Mike Moon and I grew up in Corbyville, Ontario, Canada, right across the road from Corby's Distillery. My dad, Ron Moon, worked at the plant from 1958 until his passing in 1978. Recently, in February 2010, while going through some old pictures and slides, I came across an interesting box, a black box that contained 78 slides and a bundle of pages. After further investigation, what we had was the slideshow presentation that would have been given to visitors of the plant. So, without further ado, I present to you, circa 1969, the recreation of the slideshow seen by people going to see Corby's Distillery. Welcome to Corby's Distillery, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, our plan is close to the Moira River, which runs on to Belleville and then into Lake Ontario. All our water is drawn from the wire. You can see the pump house just downstream from our storage dam. Good water is most important for a distillery. We use more than 100 gallons of water for every gallon of whiskey. Most of this water is used for cooling and during summer when the river water is too warm, we cool it with the water chiller, which has a capacity equal to 1,000 tons of ice a day. While the Moira River is good for cooling, it is not pure enough for our product so we use special water purification plant to purify it to standards far higher than those of any municipal water treatment system. Our pumps can handle 2 million gallons or more per day, no small intake. The grain elevator in Kingston collects our raw materials, corn, barley, malt and rye, most of which is purchased in Western Ontario in the United States and brought in by freighter. From Kingston, the grain comes by truck and rail to Corbyville. Here a pneumatic system automatically unloads it into our storage elevators. During the unloading, the grain is cleaned and screened and samples are drawn for laboratory tests of moisture content and suitability for our processes. Excessive moisture could be a serious problem, causing mold to form. The cleaning process naturally must be thorough as we can make it, including the removal of most of the minute metal elements by means of magnets. The grain passes through our mills to be ground to a predetermined degree of fineness. The mills have extremely precise controls to ensure that the exact degree of milling is achieved. Lab tests are made to check the precision of the grind. The ground grain then goes to the scales where it is weighed under the supervision of the Department of Excise. Next it is placed in the cookers. Here the grain is cooked under precision controlled conditions of pressure and temperature to transform it into a slushy mix rather like a thin porridge. Then ground malt is added. This material contains one of nature's mysterious enzymes which changes the bland starchy mash into a sweet, much thinner liquid. In the meantime, our chemists have prepared a pure culture of yeast starting with a single cell in a test tube. This is grown in a series of containers of increasing size until it fills a 3,000 gallon yeast tank. The yeast is really the most important essential in making alcohol. It is what causes things to happen and the yeast strain at Corby's dates back to cells from which growth began a century and more ago. When the cooked mash leaves the cookers, it is cooled to a fermented temperature and put in the fermenting tanks where some of the pure yeast culture is added. The yeast cells chosen from this strain multiply with fantastic speed and soon reach the incredible population level of 3 billion cells an ounce, which means the yeast cell population in every ounce results in equal to the human population of the world. These cells break up the sugar content of the mash into alcohol and carbon dioxide gas and in four or five days the sweet mash has been transformed into a slightly sour aromatic liquid. Once fermentation is complete the liquid is pumped to the still house where it passes through a series of copper columns for distillation. This is an intricate process that can be roughly illustrated by this photo. On the left of the still where the alcohol is removed from the liquid. To the right is the extraction column where impurities are removed from this newborn alcohol, or as we call it, high wine. And on the extreme right is the rectifying column where the final traces of impurities are removed. 
the entire process is automatically controlled to achieve consistent quality. The distilling process itself is something much more elaborate than the simple vaporization and condensation that you may relate to a simple still that a small illegal operator of stills are accustomed to use until they're caught. No moonshine whiskey maker, however ingenious he might be, can distill whiskey as expertly or as well as a well-equipped distillery. He has neither the equipment, the expertise, nor the time to let it mature. From the still, the young spirits flow into sealed tanks where it is sampled and weighed once a day under the supervision of the excise department. Samples of the concentrated spirit are then inspected by our quality control panel, after which the spirit is modified in strength with highly purified water so as to reduce evaporation and to bring the spirit to the optimum level of strength for best maturing. Special measuring instruments are used to arrive at the desired strength. Then the spirit is placed in charred oak barrels for the long years of maturing under the continual supervision of the Department of Excise officers. Oak is used because it is uniquely helpful to the chemical process and it also permits the escape of water through its pores while retaining the alcohol. The charring provides filtering and mellowing capacity not possible with other methods. It produces a smooth, purified spirit. These barrels are stored in our rack warehouse under the supervision of the Department of Excise which will later certify to the proper maturity of the spirit. All our rack warehouses are under double lock, one then applied by ourselves and the other by the Department of Excise. Youth may be wonderful, but age gets proper respect when it comes to whiskey. The maturing of young whiskey is certainly one of the most important steps in the production of a quality product. Young Spirits is a water white liquid with a slightly aromatic, pungent aroma. Contact with the oak staves of the barrel, with the layer of char covering the wood, brings about a series of slow but significant changes. The grain flavor of the young spirit is mellowed by oxidization and other chemical action, and it blends with a certain ingredient extracted from the wood, so that, four to eighteen years later, the spirit emerges as an amber-colored liquid with a mellow flavor, eminently suited for blending into a quality drink. Another part of our alcohol output is used in making gin. Gin is a young spirit that is redistilled with imported botanicals after two earlier distillations to ensure the utmost purity. These are juniper berries, lemon peel, and other natural flavor elements which are purchased all over the world, carefully assayed for flavor content, and then placed in cold storage to preserve their quality. Only small amounts of the botanicals are used, and these are carefully weighed out. To ensure that the highest quality of spirit is used in gin, extensive analysis is done by our laboratory. The spirit and the botanicals are then placed in the gin still, which doesn't look anything remotely like a bathtub, where they are carefully redistilled for many hours, finally accumulating in the receiving tank, where the product is sampled and submitted to our quality control panel for approval or rejection. Another of our products that you may see in our bottling room is vodka. Vodka starts out as a high quality grain spirit which is then redistilled in a special batch rectifier which has highly complex condensing systems. The spirit is then placed in a special stainless steel tank reserved for vodka where it is treated with active charcoal of highly absorptive power and then passes through a special stainless steel filter. Now back to whiskey. After maturing for the required number of years the whiskey is taken to our blending room. According to the particular formula, whiskey of different types and ages are blended in special blending tanks and then double checked. First the blend is sampled by our quality control panel in the blending room. Then a sample is sent to the main testing room for a second check to ensure that it meets our standards for that particular brand. Samples are kept stable in a deep freeze so that constant standards for quality comparison can be maintained. Once we have satisfied ourselves at this point, the spirit is filtered and is then stored in stainless steel tanks for bottling. At this stage, the spirit must stay as clean as it has left the filters, so only stainless steel is acceptable. Through stainless steel lines, the spirit is fed into bottles. We only use new bottles, but they still must be cleaned by a combined vacuum pressure system. 
Before they enter the filling machines, they are filled under vacuum to prevent any defective bottles reaching the customer and to ensure absolute cleanliness. Then the bottles are automatically capped and labeled. At this stage, we apply the stamps which is supplied to us by the Department of Excise. These stamps are the customer's guarantee that the spirit is the proper age and pure. The date on the stamp marks the age of the youngest whiskey of the blend when it was put in the barrels for aging. The bottles are inspected, packed into cartons, and sent to the warehouse where they are stored until loading for dispatch to the customer. Now let's go back to the manufacturing division to see what happened to the part of the liquid that wasn't turned into whiskey. You will recall that the liquid first contained a lot of suspended matter which all of the nutritional contents of the original corn and malt except the starch. In other words all the protein, fiber, mineral and vitamin content was still there so our byproducts division recovers this material for sale as a high protein ingredient of feed for cattle or other animals. The process starts with a screening operation in which the solids are screened out of the liquids. Then in our evaporators the thin liquid is concentrated into a heavy syrup. Finally the syrup and the screenings are combined and fed into large rotary dryers where the material is dried to a fine powdery consistency for shipment to feed producing companies. As we said at the beginning, all the processes in our plant require large amounts of water. Most of this water is eventually returned to the Moira River where it could cause pollution. So starting in 1966 and finishing in 1969, our company developed an advanced anti-pollution program. This was resulted in the most modern and most complete distillery waste treatment plant in Canada. Our Corbyville plant has a cooling tower for waters from our byproduct plant, a cooling tower for the clean water which has been heated to such a high temperature so that it has lost its oxygen. This water is pumped over to the tower where it is cooled to river temperature and enriched with oxygen again. All polluted waters go to our waste treatment complex which includes a large aerator where a huge population of bacteria feed all the polluted organic materials and turns them into heavy sludge. This sludge is separated in the clarifier where it settles down to be recycled into the aerator. Finally, the almost clear liquid is sent into a storage lagoon where it remains to settle for five days after which it is returned to the river practically as pure as it was when it entered our plant. The complex is a great asset to our plant and pioneering efforts in the distillery industry of Canada.